How's it going, everybody? It is I, Visual I. Hope you guys are having a beautiful day, and welcome back to another Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle versus Victoria over here in the Doubles OU tier. Let's just jump right into it. I'm going to be using a Gothitelle, pretty standard set, uh, a lot of special defense with Trick Room and with the Wiki Berry, Recycle, and Heal Pulse. And it's actually a really good supportive mod once you get Trick Room up. And uh, I'm using Incineroar, a Soul Vest. Pretty standard in Cinnamon Sometimes you see a Pinch Berry set. And then Top Fiend, I'm running Maggle Berry on there. Getting that Miss Train up so that I don't have to get status dash. She leads off a Noggin Del and Ludicolo. So Ludicolo gets to fake out off before my Incineroar gets to fake out off. That's pretty unfortunate. And then she goes for the Sludge Bomb on my Feeny, and I get one shot. And I'm like, dang, Feeny. I was kind of hoping that would maybe live one because Feeny's really bulky. But I was like, okay, that's Life Orb, so that makes sense. Usually I expect maybe Z move, but maybe it would have been a roll as well. I tried to go for a Calm Mind, and also I was kind of hoping she would over predict. So uh, I made a little stupid play right there, but uh, I played Victoria before, and she always was uh, making predictions, so I thought she would predict right there, but the safe play helped her out right there a lot. So Ally Switch comes out, that's pretty cool, and then I try to knock off the Noggin Adele, try and get rid of its life orb, but I guess I get rid of Ludicolo Soul Vest, so that's pretty cool. And I just go for the Trick Room, so now my Pokemon should be faster than her Pokemon, and she's trapped, and that's why Gothitelle is really nice, because Gothitelle Shadow Tag just makes momentum for the opponent horrible. Uh, they can't really do much, they're kind of stuck there, unless they got U-Turn or, I don't know, the Item Eject button, but uh, Ludicolo does not have that, and I doubt Noggindel has U-Turn. So Hydro Pump's not going to do much because I'm a Soul Vest Incineroar. I just go for a knockoff on Noggin Adele, and I'm going to start heal pulsing my Incineroar so that I don't have to get two-shotted by Ludicolo's Hydro Pump. And uh, even if Noggin Adele wants to go for a Dragon move, Mist Terrain is up, and Mist Terrain does weaken Dragon-type moves. I think when the Pokemon is grounded, I'm pretty sure. And if the Pokemon is not grounded, I don't think it gets weakened. So, that Dragon Meteor does absolutely nothing, and I guess Victoria decides to just go for the Ally Switch right there. I go for Flare Blitz on the Ludicolo slot, but since Ally Switch uh, switched Ludicolo, I guess I knock out Nogadadel, which is fine. I mean, I get rid of a Pokemon, which I'm down with. If Nogadadel was a little bit more healthier, that kind of would have sucked, but uh, the knockoff earlier helped out a lot. So, Gothel is pretty bulky, I would say, but uh, if you run into maybe a strong physical attacker, you might be scared out, or just, I guess, any super effective attacking Pokemon like Bug, Dark, or Ghost. So you gotta be careful of that. Sometimes you would see a defensive Gothel as well. And actually, funny, Gothel dropped down to double UU, which is uh, pretty interesting with, like, Weavile. So I wonder how well it's gonna do in doubles UU. I haven't played too much doubles UU, but there's some freaky mons down in there, like, some really cool strategies as well. I always think UU is just always a much more fun tier because there's not too much overpowered Pokemon, but there's always a lot of strategy involved as well. So I need to start dabbling with double UU. But not a lot of people play it in Wi Fi Battle. Most people just play OU in Wi Fi Battle. So that's why uh, mostly I upload is going to be doubles of uh, OU. So, um, anyways, Lander's T just knocks me out with the Ground EMZ. Down goes my Incineroar, which is fine. All I really need in this game is to hopefully try and get my Veil up, and I should be good to go, honestly. Also, my uh, Genesect looks really nice. It's Expert Bell Blizzard, and uh, it's a really good move pool. So, anyways, Politoed comes out, and it actually activates the Drizzle before I activate my Snow Warning, and I'm like, whoa. Okay, then that's going to be a Choice Scarf Politoed. That's pretty interesting. Usually, I would rather have a Slow Politoed, mainly because you kind of guarantee getting your rain up mainly when that Pokemon is faster than you. Like, that's why Torkoal with Drought is actually really good, because it's really slow, just like with Gigalith and Sandstream. So, uh, I get my Hail up, and I get my Aurora Veil up, and then I just go for a Trick Room with Goth. So, I guess the Landorus T got scared of maybe getting knocked out by an Ice move, so uh, just protect, and then the Politoed tried to do some damage to my Ninetales, but Ninetales is pretty bulky. And with Choice Scar Politoed is not really that strong. But unfortunately, Landorus is going to be faster than Ninetales with Trick Room. And uh, it's going to get that Rock Slide off. But since I do have that Weaky Berry on Gothitelle, I am able to maybe withstand some more hits later on. And I just go for Free Dry on the Landorus, knock that guy out. And uh, he is not allowed to switch out, unless he has U-Turn, which uh, I guess maybe it doesn't, I don't know. So it's Ground EMZ, Rock Slide, maybe um, something else like HP Ice, I would say. But uh, it could be even Knock Off. But anyways, Polito knocks me out, that's fine. All I really need now is Zygarde, since Zygarde is uh, Ground EMZ, and with the help of Helping Hand Gothitelle, 
it is going to put in some work. Uh, all that she has left is going to be Mega Beedrill in the back, and that is too frail. All our Pokemon are not going to be able to take a Helping Hand Thousand Arrows, and I'm adamant Zygarde as well. Max attack with Ground DMT. And uh, that's going to blow back the Polytoad of Tapu Koko with the Helping Hand damage. I also got a crit, which I don't know if it mattered, but a Helping Hand boosts it a lot. So, uh, last Pokemon is going to be the Mega Beedrill, and I'm just going to Ground EMZ that into Oblivion. So, Goth Tell really is this amazing support mon. I love it a lot. Um, in doubles, because it gets that Trick Room up, it has Heal Pulse, and it traps Pokemon, making your opponent lose momentum. And I really need to try it out in doubles you. But uh, for now, we got some doubles OU with uh, Goth Tell. So I'm going to go for the Grounding MZ, also Helping Hand, which really didn't matter since Mega Beetle should get blown back by Grounding MZ either way, since it's really frail. And Zygarde is really strong in the Z move. But hey, might as well just like nuke it and like, I don't know, send it into another dimension with Tectonic Rage. So yeah, that's going to be a GG to Victoria. And uh, Victoria always has some interesting teams. She brought a pretty offensive like very hyper offensive team versus me um not gonna dell rain and then top coco mega beach very very frail and offensive so uh, and then uh, luckily choice guard polytoad if the polytoad was slower that would kind of been kind of bad since then i wouldn't have been able to get my aurora veil up uh but i'd still have freeze dry and i could still like bop some pokemon polytoad is weak to freeze dry too but it would kind of suck though since uh genosex blizzards would be inaccurate and um I would kind of want to spam Blizzard, but I'd still be kind of slow, even though I'd try and get the Trick Room up. So, anyways, next up we got is versus Gabrielle over here. Gabrielle, I'm using a different team this time, uh, since I only got that team versus uh, Victoria, and uh, I wanted to use a different team as well with Zer Aura, and uh, still has Gothitelle, kind of the same set, but this uh, Gothitelle set is more standard, I'd say, because it has a little bit less special defense on it. The other one I was using has a lot more special defense. Um, this one has a little bit more bulk and defense and stuff. So, I'm going to bleed off of my Asulva Zero Aura. That's actually the standard set for Zero Aura in doubles OU with Snarl. So, I'm just using the standard set. And this team is made by Gift Tricks, I do believe. So, um, I just go for the Protect with Gothitel as he leads off of both his Dark types. And that kind of sucks for Gothitel. Even though I do trap them, um, I'm really threatened out by these two Dark types. Even though it is nice to trap them, so they can't really, like, you know, switch out. Unless Incineroar does have U-turn. They both learn U-turn, so they might have U-turn. Uh, so I switch out Gothel right there, going to Landris, expecting maybe a U-turn or maybe even Dark move or something like that. But Greninja just spams Taunt on me, so that's pretty interesting. I didn't expect that. And also, it outsped my Zero Aura right there, and I was like, huh? Your Choice Scarf, Greninja? <laughs> With Taunt? Okay, then. That's interesting. Uh, I think they said after the battle they put the wrong item on Greninja or something like that. So, I mean, I'll take that opportunity. Um, to maybe take advantage of Choice Scarf taunting Greninja, but I brought him Gothitelle on the uh, Zero Aura slot thinking that Incineroar would not click Knock Off on there, but that sucks. I got my Wiki Berry knocked off, so I can't really recycle it back. So Gothitelle is really weakened. And, uh, I mean, to be expected, two Dark types, I can't really do much with Gothitelle, but I still try and tr um, trap them because I do want to get rid of that Incineroar, so that's why Landris is out with Gothitelle. I really want to try and get rid of Incineroar, and uh, with Incineroar gone, that would be really nice for, I don't know, Karen Black with ICMZ, uh, claiming lives. It would be really good for my Scizor in the back. Volcanion can steam erupt it, but uh, yeah, my, it really benefits my other Pokemon if I get rid of Incineroar, because it's always a problem with Intimidate as well, and it's typing. So, now in comes Salamence, that thing is usually Mega. And it uh, could be a special attacker, which uh, would suck, but uh, double edge is usually what I'll see as well. But if it's special attacking, it's like hyper voice, and I can maybe deal with it. And uh, I just go into Zero Aura over here, and Zero Aura should be able to take anything. And uh, if he wants to go for a double edge on the Goth Tail slot, that's fine, but actually just fires off the hyper voice. Landers takes that pretty nicely, uh, since hyper voice is weakened when uh, you go for a spread move. And I have the hidden power eyes on the Landers, and I nice. Uh, a nice two shot on the Mega Salmon, so that's really good since it's four times weak to ice. So he makes a, or she makes a really nice play over here doing a double switch. Both Pokemon switch out into Excadrill and Clefable. So I went for Plasma Fist. I guess that's pretty obvious. I don't really have any other move to hit the Excadrill as well, which kind of sucks. I kind of wanted to predict it, but I was like, you know, what am I supposed to do? Uh, there's nothing much I can really do. So, uh, and also I just uh, hit Empire Ice, the Clefable coming in. Um, when I try to Plasma Fist of Greninja, Excadrill came in. So, 
Uh, now I just hard switch into my scissor over here, hoping that I can maybe take a hit, and I just go for Earth Powering Extra Drill, hoping that I can knock it out. But that is not going to be the case since Landris isn't really that strong in special attack, and Extra Drill has decent like you know stats, but F and HP. So over here he clicks the ground EMZ on my Scizor slot, so I guess maybe he expected Scizor to come out on my Zero Aura since it's pretty obvious, or maybe uh, he didn't just want to go for Earthquake. I mean, that's going to blow back Scizor. That was my Mega, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world, really. Um, even though Scizor looked really, really nice versus Gabrielle's team, once I start Swords Dancing up, it is very good with Goth Tell. Uh, maybe with Heal Pulse, Heal Pulse and uh, Trick Room, if I want to do that. Or even if I want to try and... Um, Helping hand it. So, anyways, I just go for Earth Power and Exegil and uh, knock it out because I do want to trap it with Goth Tail. They're not allowed to switch out. Like, I need to trap those guys. So, that's why Goth Tail is very nice bringing that in. It is a little risky though because Clefable does knock out Landris. It could have knocked out Goth Tail right there. That's why I was hoping that they would attack it. But uh, Landris does go down as well. I just went for Heal Pulse, just an off chance Landris lived or maybe Gabriella protected with Clefable or something like that, but that didn't happen. So now I bring in Kieran Black as Gabriella brings in at the Greninja, and uh, Greninja should be able to knock out Gothel at this point, so I just go for Protect, expecting it, the Greninja to uh, attack that slot, and Clefable might be just wanting to go for attack on Kieran Black, reminded that they cannot switch out, so Clefable's stuck here when the Gothel's out, so... It's going to get hit by this ICMZ, and that thing is going to blow it back. Clefable's not going to live this. Sub-Zero Slammer is just too dang strong with free shock, so that is really nice. I was kind of scared of Protect right there, not going to lie, but uh, maybe they just didn't think about that. Maybe they just thought that I would be, I don't know, Life Orb or something, other kind of Kieran Black. Um, so that's really good. So now in comes Tyranitar, and uh, that's going to be really scary since Tyranitar does threaten Kieran Black a lot. And... Um, yeah, I don't ha really have a good switch on Tyranitar, honestly. Like, Rock Moose, not really... I don't look at my team, I don't have a switch on Volcanion, what? So, I just go for Fusion Bolt on the uh, Greninja. I am going to be able to outspeed Tyranitar, so it's not Choice Scarf. does go for Rock Slide, knocks on my Goth Tell, and almost knocks out Kieran Black right there. So that is going to be Life for Tyranitar. That is some beautiful damage from Tyranitar, like... Rock Slide is nice, and luckily, I live after one hit of sand, but I am going to go down to the next sand turn, so that kind of sucks. So I, in comes my Zero Aura, it's going to be outspeeding everything, and I just go for the Plasma Fist on the Mega Salmon, since uh, there's not much he can really stop that, and I really just want to knock out a Pokemon, because if I knock out Mega Salmon, then I can maybe beat the Tyranitar with the Volcanion in the back with Steam Eruption, provided if I hit my Steam Eruption. So he goes for Protect with Tyranitar, that's to be expected, maybe expecting maybe a close combat from Zero Aura, Maybe an Earth Power from my Kieran Black. Um, maybe he thought Kieran Black might attack Salamence or something like that, and Zero Aura would close combat with Tarantar, but nah. Um, that's not going to be the case. Maybe he was going to think that, I would think, he's going to Earthquake or something like that. And that could be bopping a Zero Aura real quick, since Salamence is immune to it as well, but um, luckily it didn't happen. So now Volcanion comes in. This is my last two Pokemon versus one Tarantar. Go for the Plasma Fist, and then Steam Eruption is going to not miss and knock out the Tarantar. So that was kind of close, actually. Um, it was, I only had two Pokemon left, Volcanion and the Zero Aura versus that Tyranitar Life Orb, but luckily um, they didn't protect with Salmons, and if the Tyranitar attacked when Salmons protected, that could have been scary, actually, because uh, if Tyranitar went for like an Earthquake or a Rock Slide, that would have maybe done a lot to Zero Aura. Uh, it wouldn't knock me out with a Rock Slide, but Earthquake might knock me out, and it would knock out Kieran Black as well. But I guess, like I said, they fear close combat. And that's the thing about Zero Aura. Uh, Zero Aura has that beautiful move pool that scares everything. So the next game we got is versus Caleb, and Caleb, he has an interesting team. Like, that's... You don't see a team like this usually, but I guess it's a gimmick. So we'll just show it off and see what he got over here. So I'm just going to lead off with Zero Aura and Kirim. The two hard-hitting bad boys over here, we got Fake Out on Zero Aura as well. It's actually really nice. Um, it's really fast as well. So Orangu usually has Inner Focus, I would say, which is, makes it immune to uh, flinching. So, I'm not going to go for a fake out on it. I'm just going to try and Plasma Fist the Rack with it. Looking at it, it's going to be like a Trick Room Instruct Team, first off. And that can be really scary if you allow it to get the Trick Room up. You need to try and, like, one-shot the Orange Guru to stop Orange Guru from getting that Trick Room up. Because if it gets that Trick Room up, it's going to be kind of scary uh, with instructing that hard-hitting Iraq with it. Like, Iraq is just going to keep liquidating every single Pokemon. So, but you can also play around it as well. Like, maybe you can predict Iraq with attacking a Pokemon you can protect and stop it from... Uh, Instructing every single Pokemon down. So, yeah, I just go for Ice MC on a rock, Orange Guru, and down it goes. That's uh, amazing for me. Uh, <laughs> Kieran Black beating down Pokemon like usual. 
So in game Meowth's taking goes for gravity, and this is where everything gets weird. I didn't expect this at all. Um, it didn't really make a lot of sense with gravity instruct, but um, I guess maybe the, in the back of their Pokemon they have something that they don't want to miss. Like they do have Regice, so maybe like a Zap Cannon Regice or something like that. I don't know. But um, makes a nice play over here as he goes into Palo Sand as I try and Plasma Fist the Rakuten, and I go forward just an Ice Beam on Meowth Stick again. I'm uh, just trying to knock it out. Meowth is actually taking the Ice Beam pretty dang well, but I mean, it makes sense since Kieran Black is not going to be a special attacker on this team. It's more a physical attacker, but still, Meowth Stick. I don't know, when I see it, I'm like, eh, what is this Pokemon? Just a Prankstermon baby Pokemon. And actually, it's spamming Heal Bell as well. I'm like, what is this? So, Palisane actually has weakness policy on it with uh, Amnesia. And I'm like, okay, that's uh, interesting. We activate our weakness policy over here. And, um,. Yeah, I don't really expect much from that, to be honest. I think he really relied on Trick Room. That's kind of a thing with your team. You can't really just rely on one Trick Ponies with Trick Room or Sticky Webs or any kind of like hazard. Because if it doesn't, if you don't get him up or if you don't get the Trick Room up, your team kind of falls short. So I think he really relied on that Trick Room. I don't even know if Meowstic learns Trick Room, but if it does, he should have probably put it on there because then maybe he'd get that Prankster Trick Room or something like that. I don't think it does though. And plus, I don't think. Trick Room has negative priority, so even a Prankster might just, like, not even go first, so. Anyways, he brought in Smeargle and actually has Water Shuriken with, uh, you know, attacking his Palisand. So that's kind of cool, I guess, with the Water Compaction. I kind of get it, since you do want to get uh, a lot of defense with it. So Palisand with a lot of defense and with Amnesia, a lot of special defense. It makes sense. But Karen Black is just going to one-shot this thing with Ice Beam. Like, it's too low to the point where it's going to knock it out. So he should have, like, if he had Trick Room up, he could have shored up right there and then like lived and that could have been kind of annoying actually um but i don't know what else his moves pool will be shore up amnesia like weakness policy earth power shadow ball i would say i mean that's you would get walled by i guess uh flying normal types like braveyard star after stuff like that swallow but uh i guess you do have reg ice for the ice moves so that is interesting to say the least but at least um yeah i get to bring in my scissor over here because scissor is just gonna bullet punch stuff and the Red Ice is not going to be able to take on it. But he actually gets a nice focus blast on Kieran Black and gets a nice Bedeath drop. So maybe he can knock out Kieran Black. But it's looking like a wrap versus uh, Caleb. There's not much else he can really do since his team is very, very slow. All my Pokemon are just faster. Um, I could just beat it down. Like, Arachnid's going to get destroyed by Fusion Bolt. Red Ice is just going to get destroyed by Bullet Punch. So um, that's just what I'm going to do. And maybe he can pull through with Red Ice. I don't know, because Red Ice does have a decent move pool. It actually lives that Bullet Punch as well. Which is, you know, to be expected. It's legendary. It does have a decent pool. So, Arachnid does live on a sliver. Like, it literally lives on an invisible focus staff. So, that's pretty interesting. And also, Red Ice gets a freeze on my scissor. So, I'm like, are you kidding me? What is this? Let me just let me just finish this game up. Come on now. So, <laughs> and then Arachnid just um, knocked my Kieran Black out. So, this invisible focus ash, Arachnid, and freezing Blizzard, Red Ice kind of. Um, stop my scissor and Karen Black from beating it down. So I'm like, all right, let's just bring in Volcanion and Heat Wave, you guys. Volcanion finishing the game again. So Volcanion is actually pretty dope um, with the water and fire typing um, stab. So it can come in handy a lot of the time. So knock out a Rackman right there. It's gonna go down. And he actually tried to zap cannon me, which would have been scary because what if he hit? And what if he paralyzed? Like it always paralyzes the zap cannon. So what if he like got the full pair on Volcanion and then my scissor was frozen? That could have been actually kind of bad. Like I don't know. Um, even though I still have um, Pokemon in the back. He could have maybe still pulled through with Hacks, I don't know. And maybe I could have knocked him out, but... Like, Gothel can't do anything, so... Yeah. Goes to show, Hacks can always pull through in a Pokemon battle, but... Yeah, that's gonna be it for the Wi-Fi battles. Hope you guys enjoyed. Just some quick doubles OU battles with Gothel showing it off and uh, Shadow Tag being good. And, yeah, I mean, if you want to do some doubles OU battles, that could be nice with Gothel since it dropped down with Weavile and stuff. Uh, I think some other doubles Pokemon dropped down as well, and then some other doubles Yu Yu Monster rised up. I don't know if Mega Dancy rose up or something like that. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for the Wi-Fi Battle. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and do your thing. And I guess common question of the day is going to be, I guess, what is your favorite Fake Out Mon in doubles? We got a lot of Fake Out users. Zero War is a pretty good Fake Out Mon. Ludicolo is really nice with Rain, and then Incineroar is everywhere with Fake Out. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, peace.